Hi, my name is Callie Mallory and I am a senior here at Oklahoma State University. I will be graduating in May with a degree in recreational therapy. I'm Courtney Lubers. I'm also a senior and will be graduating in May with a degree in recreational therapy. I'm Janelle Frey. Um, I'm a junior at OSU and I'll be graduating with a degree in recreational therapy. For our project, we decided to create um, an adult day treatment center. As you can see, it is called our CKJ Adult Day Treatment Center. Um, we chose this because um, the town that we decided to do this in currently does not have a place that provides the services that we will provide in our facility. Um, so just kind of a little background and um, general information about our facility. Um, so our main goal is just to be able to provide transitional and short-term rehabilitation care to individuals that are um, coming from a health facility, coming from a hospital stay, um, and going to back home, or someone that is coming from home to a care facility, such as a nursing home or a long-term care facility. Um, so we want to, first and foremost, be a resource for all caregivers in the community. It can be difficult for um, people that are per caring for and providing for individuals with disabilities to feel like they have um, a safe place to kind of go and get the support that they need to be able to adequately provide for these individuals. Um, we also want to provide engaging and um, challenging programs for these adults. Um, we want to be able to encourage them to re-engage um, if they have become disengaged in life. Um, this will help them to ultimately have a better quality of life. Um, we want to provide a safe and therapeutic environment for these individuals to reconnect with life. This is a big thing for our facility. We want to make sure that they feel safe when they are coming here. We want to make sure that they are encouraged. Um, we don't want to have any of our participants feel as though that they are coming um, because they have to or coming and not being supported in the ways that they deserve to be. Um, we want to provide support, as I said earlier, for the caregivers because, again, it is hard um, to be able to provide for these individuals all by yourself. And so we want to make sure that we are there and present when we are needed. Um, and again, we want to just make sure we can meet the needs of both the caregivers and the participants. So the things I just talked about are kind of summarized up in our mission and vision and philosophy statements. So um, our vision statement specifically states um, that we want to create a setting that brings more normalcy and joy to adults with disabilities in their everyday life. Um, people that are struggling with health issues and disabilities um, don't always feel like they have a sense of normalcy or even sometimes a routine in their life. So um, it is our vision that we can help them kind of create that normalcy and that routine. Um, our mission statement um, is as follows. Um, we are committed to providing our members a stable and therapeutic environment in which all individuals are valued and appreciated in a safe and encouraging atmosphere. Again, we want to stress that we want to be stable and therapeutic as much as possible. Um, again, we want to be a place where these individuals can come and feel safe and feel appreciated and feel that they are valued because they are very valued uh, members of our community. Our philosophy statement um, our facility believes that all individuals have the right to have leisure experiences. This is really important and is kind of the foundation of our facility um, as a whole. We want to make sure that these individuals feel comfortable in all of their leisure pursuits. So um, this could look anything from even just riding on a daily basis or even just getting up and walking around their house. We just want to make sure that we can help them reach their goals. So one of our main goals um, is to make informed decisions about therapeutic options and interventions that rely on evidence-based research. We want to make sure that all of our employees, um, all of our staff are fully informed and educated on um, the best and most efficient ways to provide our services to our participants. Um, so one of our specific objectives for that goal um, is that all member, staff members will participate in quarterly continuing education hours with a focus on renewing their licensure um, in addition to being cognizant of new evidence-based interventions. So we want to make sure that we are constantly learning and constantly adapting and changing our services um, to provide for these individuals in the best way possible. Um, so for our management approach, this is a really important factor of our facility. This is kind of the basis of how we um, carry out all of our plans and just kind of all of our everyday business life at the facility. So we kind of combined two different approaches in, in order to kind of make it mesh with what our um, mission and philosophy statements kind of believe. Um, so from the behavioral management approach, we want to make sure that all of our employees are involved in um, decision making. 
we want to make sure that um, we are getting a multi-dimensional point of view um, so that we are not only making decisions from higher up on our program structure um, so that we can have um, input from lower level employees that are actually interacting with these patients and are seeing what they need and we can incorporate this and make decisions as a whole. Um, we want to encourage interdepartmental cooperation. This is really, really important. Um, this will be done through interdisciplinary treatment teams. Um, we will provide these meetings once a week um, and this kind of gives us an opportunity to sit down as a team, as a whole, and talk about each patient individually. So these meetings do take a while, but it allows us to kind of um, talk about what we did see, maybe what we didn't see, any improvements that could have been made within the participants. Um, and this allows us to just, again, create a better and more effective form of treatment for all of our participants. Um, and lastly, we want to make sure that all of our employees understand that they are valued and that um, their input is very important. Again, like I mentioned earlier, um, we want to make sure that all levels of our hierarchy are providing input because this really makes it um, better for us to make decisions that are going to have a better effect on our participants. From our classical management approach, um, we want to make sure that we are completing all of our tax tasks in an efficient manner. Um, this may not be the fastest way to do things, but we want to make sure that we are doing it efficiently and correctly. So if we need to kind of take a step back and look at things a different way, then that's what we will do. Um, we also want to make sure that we provide a chain of command. This is going to, again, improve our efficiency and the success of the facility as a whole. Um, this also um, makes sure that our tasks are distributed evenly among our hierarchy so that one person is not solely responsible for um, a task that may be too difficult for one person to handle. Um, it also goes back to our interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary cooperation um, and allows us to kind of work as a team to again provide the best standard of care that we can. Okay, so um, here is our organizational chart. It displays every employee at our facility. Um, at the top we have our president, vice president, then it goes down to our directors. Um, each of these directors are split up, and um, we have our program director above our assistant program coordinator, and then we go into our managerial sections. Um, our health services special therapies manager is above our special therapy supervisor, and then it goes into um, all of our special therapies like occupational therapy, recreational therapy, physical therapy, music, and art therapy. Um, along with our organizational chart, we also have a few job descriptions. Um, for example, we have our management services, which um, involves our custodian, which is responsible for carrying out the daily duties of keeping the facility in the most clean and safest condition. We also, and along with our management services, we also have our accounting coordinator, um, which is responsible for all the financial aspects of the facility. Um, and then we move on to our special therapies, which involves our recreational therapist. Um, a few more of our job descriptions are um, administrative assistant, custodial, office manager, special therapy supervisor, accounting coordinator, safety and security manager, our occupational therapist, physical therapist, and recreational therapist. Um, a few of our policies are our ethics policy, dress code policy, and attendance policy. Um, our ethics policy upholds all state and federal ethic, ethical laws, um, respects participant rights, and follows all, all national organization guidelines. Um, for our dress code policy, we like all our staff members to wear um, our co cobalt blue scrubs that go along with our logo. Um, for those scrubs, we like, we provide them so everyone's wearing the same things, um, closed-toed shoes, and a limit use of scented hygiene products. So for our attendance policy, we require our employees to call um, and give notice when late. Um, there will be termination after the first no-call, no-show, and 24-hour advance notice of intended absence. So another really important aspect of um, our business is our budget and in our budget we have included um, different like departments so we have like our full-time um, 
employees as well as our part-time slash seasonal they have their different sections of the budget and then we also have our personal benefits and our contractual agreements um, as well as our supplies and continuing education um, so going into those um, our budget summary um, goes into more detail about each um, category that we have so for our personnel um, category we have full-time and part-time employees um, which our budget for that category totaled one million six hundred and forty three thousand and eighty dollars um, next on our budget we had person personal benefits and for that we budgeted that we would have um, $136,375.64 um, for our contractual agreement um, we totaled that we would have $21,000 for that and our supplies for this facility um, we budgeted in that we would have um, $76,000 then for our continuing education to help compensate for any interns that we might have um, we have $5,000 for that. So our starting budget was $2 million and we, after factoring everything in, we ended up um, using $1,922,022.98. So going um, into our budget and like our process of buying all the supplies, we want to buy the highest like quality of goods and equipment that we can get at the lowest price. Um, going into like buying, the process of buying, um, we will have a designated um, full-time employee that is in charge of planning out when we will need to buy new supplies and we'll take care of the purchasing process as well as following up, making sure that um, the supplies meet our standard. Um, designated employee, which would be a purchasing agent, will provide a monthly budget to each department to let them know how much that they um, are allotted to spend. And any purchase order, like if a department wants to purchase something, then they need to turn um, a formal order in to the department supervisor. Um, and they sh at the beginning of each month, and that should be given two months in advance before the product is needed. Okay, um, so for our marketing plan um, and our executive summary, our main goal is to raise awareness for the need of our services we provide at our facility. Um, some of the different services we provide at our facility involves recreational therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and art and music therapy. Um, our plan is to create radio commercials, post flyers and posters, hand out informational pamphlets, and provide information to admitting facilities. Um, this plan helps us to reach our goal by raising awareness about our facility and our mission and involving community outreach. We have our market analysis. Um, some of the services that are provided are pet therapy, cooking and meal prep, mobility, journaling, laundry, cleaning, and expressive art therapy. Um, since there's not a lot of facilities like ours, um, this creates a high demand for the individuals in need of the types of services we provide. Um, some of the demographics are individuals with disabilities, um, individ individuals who are ages 21 and up, and localized to 30 mile radius of facility that's located in Tulsa. Um, some of the licensing and certifications include the government laws and regulations um, and it is required to have a state license or certification de depending on what state the facility is located in. Some of the staff requirements um, are required under the government laws and regulations to have a licensed nurse in some capacity which is provided under our Health and Services Department. These services we provide follows along with our mission and vision by providing our members a stable and therapeutic environment in which all individuals are valued and appreciated in a safe and encouraging atmosphere. 
So we kind of mentioned um, some of our goals and strategies in uh, the previous slide, um, but our biggest goal is just to raise awareness of the services provided at our facility. Again, um, there's not a place currently that provides the same services all in one place. Um, so again, we just kind of want to raise awareness about it. Um, so some of the strategies, as we mentioned before, are to create radio commercials. Um, just if someone's listening to it on the way home or way to work, you know, they kind of listen to it and are able to hear it. And that's a great way to kind of advertise for our facility. Um, we want to create flyers and posters and possibly even banners to kind of place in local places, preferably health um, facilities such as pharmacies, um, just to kind of raise awareness again about our facility. Um, and another thing we want to do is create informational pamphlets. Um, you know, there's always pamphlets and magazines sitting out at doctor's offices. Um, so this is a great way for us to kind of um, kind of get our foot in the door again um, at health facilities and just kind of have our information laying out there ready and available for those that need it. Um, so some of the information that is included in our pamphlet includes the programs and the services we provide, um, the location of our facility, that's very important. Um, we want pictures of our facility, equipment, and staff members um, because again, we want to seem as inviting and welcoming as possible. Um, and we want to kind of include um, some of our vision and mission statements. This will kind of allow participants and possible participants to see what we're all about and understand why we have this facility. Um, and then again, we want to let them know that we are accredited and we do have qualifications and licensure um, to provide these services to them. Um, and so again, we just want to provide information to admitting facilities. Um, so this way they can administer this information out to possible participants. Um, so this is just kind of a continuation of this. So for our product, um, we are providing different services, again, through our OT, PT, RT, all of those different things and our programs within those departments. Um, so we also want to focus on community integration. So if an individual, again, is coming from a hospital or a healthcare facility, we want to help them kind of get back into the community. Um, our place, we want to have it in the physical distribu distribution of like all of our paper products. So our posters, our flyers, our pamphlets. Um, just kind of, again, posting the local businesses and, again, spreading by word of mouth. Um, and then our price, our services are paid for through private insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. Um, and if they're unable to pay through this, if the insurance is unable to pay, um, we don't ever want to turn you in the way. So, again, payment plans are optional. Um, and we want to make sure that they know that we are willing to like work with them on payment because, again, we want these people to, and our participants, to have these services and to be able to participate in it without worrying about being able to pay for it. Um, so our promotion, we will provide information um, such as our address, our phone number, email, just any way that they can get um, to us and they can, we can get information out to them. Um, we want to be as open as possible and provide as many ways for them to reach us as possible. Um, but again, the goal is just to bring awareness to these marketing strategies since we are a new facility, we are a new type of facility in this area. Again, we just kind of want to raise awareness about it. And an important part of our marketing plan is how we like are going to go about um, implementing it. Um, and we plan to like implement the pamphlets, posters, and banners through um, local hospitals, pharmacies, um, any kind of like medical facilities that are kind of related to what we do. Um, then we want to um, initiate the radio commercials to help spread the word about our facility. Um, we plan to do the radio commercials, um, have them played on the radio systematically throughout the day. Um, at least three times a day. Um, so maybe like in the morning when people are on their way to work or lunch break or on the way home in the evenings. Um, after the implementation of um, our posters and pamphlets as well as the radio commercials, um, we will evaluate how effective they have been. Um, the radio commercials um, will be utilized for 15 days before we reevaluate. Um, how effective they have been and we will um, to do that we will hand out surveys um, to our members of the facility to um, ask how they heard about our facility so that we know what is being most useful of getting um, the word of our facility out um, this allows us to make like corrections um, to our marketing tools if something's really not working and something is working more over something else, then we can put more towards that. 
Um, so this is our marketing budget. Um, and here we just have that um, our each individual cost for the pamphlets and posters and the radio commercials. And we also have notes on these um, that for like the community outreach, we will be um, paying someone to like go out to the community and use like the word of mouth to get um, our facility out there. And they will be getting paid um, 13 an hour for um, eight hours, which would be overtime. And we also um, had to compensate for an extra employee going for a um, intern going out with them to help. Um, so again, for our facility, we just um, want to be a resource for all caregivers and all participants um, with disabilities in our community and just be a really great resource for them to come and have a safe environment for them to learn or relearn how to do various activities and um, to continue and broaden their leisure pursuits in, in a safe way. Thank you.